All right, y'all. So this is going to be the next episode of our true crime vampires in history. So I've actually talked about this particular one before because it intersected with my life in a way. Um, I will, in the comments of this video, tag the TikTok that discusses more about that if you guys want to go back and watch that video to find out more. But on this one, I'm going to keep it more towards just the basics about the story um, according to what was reported in mainstream media. It was on Discovery Channel, on Investigation Discovery, and a couple of other documentaries. So you can go look this up. But um, for the sake of argument and for the true crimes vampires in history, I'm just going to stay on topic and show you guys some things about this. Okay. In the summer of 2011, a young man was going to Parker, Florida to reconnect with his birth mother after having been adopted out. It was actually a family adoption, um, and he was 16 years old at the time and going to spend the summer with his mother in Florida, um, and he lived in Indian Mountain, Tennessee with uh, his grandparents, which... I believe was um, Tamay Hendershot and his mother's name was Nancy Lynn Robinson. This was meant to be a wonderful opportunity for Nancy to reconnect with her son and to spend the summer developing a relationship with him after having to give him up when she was younger for whatever reasons that she had. Logically, Nancy and Jacob were both incredibly excited for the opportunity that was presented. His name was Jacob Robert Hendershot, and he was born on November 22nd, 1994. Um, and again, like I said, he had his adopted family and his biological mom. And his adoptive parents were Melvin Hendershot and Tamay Robinson Hendershot. When Jacob arrived in Parker, Florida, it so happened that he met a young woman who was 18 years old and she was of the gothic persuasion um had blue hair and was kind of a little bit you know alternative very pretty girl and they hit it off while he was staying at an apartment complex visiting his mother nancy now here's where things get hazy stephanie and jacob began a friendship that summer and he had been there for just a couple of weeks and had been talking to her and his mother noticed her of course and was feeling a little bit kind of slighted because this was supposed to be her time to spend time with her son and it seemed like he had developed a crush on this local girl and was spending more of his time with her so she kind of confronted stephanie trying to softly be like kind of laying a boundary down like hey i appreciate that you've made friends with my son but i'm trying to spend some time with him can you kind of back off? And Stephanie kind of a little bit pushed back on that with a little bit of an attitude um, and basically insisted that they were going to stay friends anyways. So July 5th came around of 2011 and Jacob took off and his mother did not know, you know, what he was doing. She figured he just went to go hang out with Stephanie again and that he would be back later. After several hours... When Jacob didn't come home, Nancy began to get worried. Naturally, when he didn't come home for a full 24 hours, she went and she made a police report. So then became this big investigation seeking to find where Jacob was. And there was no sight or sound or anything. And nobody in their apartment complex seemed to have any information about Jacob. It's also important to note here that Nancy, his mother, was a little bit surprised that Jacob was even, you know, friends with Stephanie, considering that she was a little bit more gothic-minded, and her son was in, um, he was active in, like, Christian youth camp, he was active in youth choir, he played guitar for the church and he was very involved in evangelical Christian uh, missionaries and things. 
So in her opinion, it was definitely a case of opposites attract, and she thought that this was not a good news person for her son to be hanging out with. And so when he didn't show back up home, and she put in that missing persons report, she let them know that her son was there visiting from Tennessee, that he hadn't been to Florida before, this, this was his first time being there, and there were very limited amounts of people that he knew, but that one person did stand out. And that was Stephanie Pisty, who actually didn't live in their apartment complex, as it turned out. But she was a babysitter for a couple who did rent an apartment there by the name of Tammy Morris and Joel Millsap. And it's also important to note that Parker, Florida is a town close to Panama City Beach. It is on that stretch of, you know, Florida Panhandle Highway, um... And so it's a bit of a party area too, and that's something to take into account. So there were so many different possibilities for what could have happened to Jacob. But of course, the police proceeded to ask Stephanie about it, and she said that she hadn't seen him. And then they started to monitor her social media. And that's about the place that they really started to focus all of their efforts on once they started seeing the kind of content that Stephanie Pisty had been posting to her Facebook, in addition to some things that were seen and heard in chat rooms that Tammy Morris had been, I mean, Tammy Morris had been inhabiting and visiting and what had been seen in those places. And so they proceeded to continue to monitor Stephanie and Tammy and see what would happen. And it seemed to the point that Nancy said that she felt like Stephanie was almost taunting her, like constantly showing up, asking about where Jacob was, how Jacob was, like she was trying to be this antagonistic force when in the middle of her turmoil while she's got this ongoing missing person um, search going for her son, who she was incredibly eager to be reconnecting with. And as you can imagine, this turned their dream opportunity into a nightmare situation. Then, on July 14th, 2011, the worst news a mother could ever receive was given to Nancy. Nancy was informed that they had found Jacob, but they did not recover him alive. Jacob had been found completely nude, unalived, in a drainage tube near an inlet not far from the apartment complex. And if you look up pictures, you can see there was kind of like a little bit of construction going on in the area where they did this. And there was a big, like, concrete drain tube, like a giant one um, that you might see in like a culvert or something like that. And they had stuffed his body into that. Um, and this is where and how the police discovered Jacob was no longer among the living. Now, I'm pretty sure that I'm getting down to my last nitty-gritty minute here, so I'm going to have to do a part two to let you guys know what happened and the events that unfolded. Um, I'm probably going to have to be a little discretionary on what I can uh, describe in explicit terms because it was a pretty bad situation, but I think the most important part to feature here is what the motivating factors were. So, Stephanie actually had a boyfriend at the time that she met Jacob, and as you can imagine, um, after meeting Jacob and kind of developing a little bit of a relationship, friendship, where they were kind of flirty and everything, um, when Stephanie's boyfriend discovered that there was this new guy kind of encroaching on what he considered to be his girlfriend, even though him and Stephanie were kind of in a it's complicated relationship dynamic at that point. They had been dating and involved for a while, but they were kind of in an argument or whatever, but he didn't consider them to be separated. So when he came back around and found her babysitting at Tammy and Joel's house, and everything he was like what's going on with this dude and Stephanie lied to him and told him that Jacob had come on to her and that he had been harassing her and that he had tried to SA her the R word you know um and that led to what became the tragedy that took Jacob's life so I will go on to discussing more about how that worked in part two so go to part two